So using PowerShell to test a connection to a SQL Server is actually really easy. Uh, so what we've done here is we've written a function that does just that. It's got three parameters, the server name, the database name, uh, and the credentials to use. The big thing that this function does is to build the connection string. It's hard to remember. I always forget what the, <laughs> what the syntax is. So here at lines 14 and 15, it grabs the username and password. And the line 16, it actually builds the connection string. So you can see it's got the data source, which is the database server, uh, the database, which is the name of the database, user ID, which is the username, and then of course, the password. And then on line 17, it actually builds that .NET object using the new object commandlet. And then we're passing it, of course, to the SQL connection variable. And on 18, we run the open method. And if this works, it will actually go down to line 20 and return true out of this function. But since, since it's within a try statement, if there are any errors thrown, it'll actually defer down to the catch statement. And here, if the exception message has cannot open server in it, then it'll just return a generic false. Those are pretty straightforward. Otherwise, it'll give you some more information in the finally loop. Either way, it'll go ahead and close that connection. So the syntax is pretty simple. We've got test SQL connection, the function here. I'm specifying a server name, a database name, and the credentials. And I'm just having it prompt me for credentials so I can go ahead and type them in. So I run this. I'll go ahead and type in the correct credentials so that we can see what it looks like when it's supposed to work. And so you can see that if it actually works, it returns true. So we could use that inside of an if statement if we needed. But if I put in incorrect credentials, you can see here that it's actually giving me a login failed. Uh, and then finally, if we actually try to connect to a database server that doesn't actually exist, it takes a few seconds to time out, but when it does, you can see that it actually gives this error saying there's some kind of network problem. But it's because it doesn't exist. Anyway, thanks for watching.